Hey friends, welcome back and today's topic will be our 10 minute take on Haemophilus Influenza B vaccination. On the left side you can see my references. Special thanks to Dr. Ashwat sir from KMCH for um, helping me refine this presentation for you guys. Thank you sir. So if a question on Haemophilus Influenza B vaccination is asked, you will start with introduction. What are the things you are going to talk about? You are going to talk about the disease that it is trying to protect. So Haemophilus Influenza is a bacteria which is important uh, especially in children less than 2 years of age causing meningitis, pneumonia, epiglottitis over here and as a whole a bacteremia. Correct? So these are the diseases that you are trying to protect. And why are you worried? See, these diseases uh, generalized any place or overall mortality is about 10% and a meningitis can have up to 20% mortality. And among those who survive this meningitis, they can have morbidity in up to 10 to 15% of patients, especially hearing loss is what we know and what we have read. So this younger age along with this much amount of mortality and morbidity resulted in uh, thinking about a vaccination. So what did they do? As usual, they tried to remove the polysaccharide from the organism. So what was the polysaccharide? It was PRP which stands for polyribosyl ribitol phosphate. But what's the problem with polysaccharide vaccines? It can be given only after 2 years of age. It has got no T cell uh, induction. So if there is no T cell induction, there is going to be no immune memory cells. And if there is no immune memory cells, there is not going to be a long lasting immunity. But these are the things we want. Isn't it so? We want protection in a child who is less than 2 years of age. So intelligently, they did conjugation. What did they conjugate with? They will conjugate it with a protein because protein is capable of inducing a T cell uh, memory which results in uh, a memory induction which results in a long lasting immunity and a good boosting. Okay. So what are the proteins that they were conjugated with? One was PRP OMP. OMP is outer membrane protein outer membrane protein of Neisseria meningitis this is not available in India so I will not talk of it now okay. the other two which are available in India are PRP T which is tetanus toxoid and PRP is combinated or the HP is combinated with OC which is a mutant protein of Coranibacterium diphtheria. Right? Alright. So these are all just carriers. Okay. The tetanus, the diphtheria protein that we are talking about are just carriers. So these carriers will not produce immunity for tetanus and diphtheria. They are just going to act as a vehicle to produce immunity to your Haemophilus influenza. Got it? So, if somebody is asking if it is going to give protection to TT or uh, tetanus or diphtheria, then the answer is no. So, what they found with this was the first injection increased antibody responses, second boosted it and the third boosted it even more. So, they ended up with a three dose regimen. But more about it later. So, once you know the vaccine is produced, how is it going to be stored and how is it going to be used? So storage wise, what I have told you, if you do not remember, write 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. You will most likely be correct. Then 0.5 ml IM is the root of injection. IM less than 3 years prefer anterolateral thigh and more than 3 years prefer deltoid. So why are you giving this vaccine? You want protection. Correct. So protection 
is offered up to 90 to 100 percent in a study that was following up a patient for one year post vaccination okay and this was especially against invasive disease which is what is more important for us correct what they found out what they found out was when antibody was 0.15 microgram per ml this gave a protection at exposure point so if a patient is exposed to hemophilus influenza b if the patient had even 0.15 then the, it offered some protection if it was more than one microgram per ml it was associated with long term protection and if it was more than 5 microgram per ml then it inhibited nasopharyngeal carriage see this is important because if many in the community are going to be vaccinated so then even the unvaccinated will be protected so there was herd effect for hemophilus influenza b vaccination next so if you see in the market most of the hemophilus influenza b vaccinations are available as combination note that i am not talking about conjugation this is combination in combination with other vaccines that are available okay so combination vaccines are usually in combination with uh, dpt it can be whole cell or a cellular in combination with ipv in combination with hepatitis b so i will just put out some of the names here so that you know which is available in the market and if at all it comes in your uh, viva or oski station make sure to check the contents on the packet that is given because we may not be able to remember all of these offhand if you are not using it regularly so a hip vaccine in combination with whole cell pertussis is easy food okay this is easy food if this is available with acellular pertussis then it is in fan rix okay next if it is available with whole cell pertussis plus hepatitis b then pentavac just one or two one or two examples i'll be giving not all if it is available with acellular pertussis and hepatitis b then it is easy five next if it is available with um, acellular pertussis and ipv then it is pentaxim note that this is pentavac this is pentaxim okay if it is available with acellular pertussis ipv and hepatitis b it is protecting against six things correct it is hexaxim okay and infandrix hexa if it is available with whole cell pertussis plus ipv plus hepatitis b then it is easy six you see the same thing in multiple different combinations they have different different names this you may not need to write in your exams but you need to know for your practice and you need to know for your oskis and vivas okay so now that you know how are you going to give what is the schedule see schedule as far as our uh, universal immunization program is concerned it is 6 10 and 14 weeks as a pentavalent vaccine okay and no booster note this point there is no booster what about iap schedule IAP schedule advises for a primary series 6, 10 and 14 weeks. Booster at 16 to 18 months. This booster is very important. Why? Because there is decreased immunity over time. Okay. Because immunological memory is not just enough to keep the immunity up apparently. And second, in environment, there is less organisms of hepatite or I mean uh, hemophilus influenza B. The importance is organisms present increase natural boosting. If this is less, then natural boosting is also less. So you need to give artificial boosters at 16 to 18 months.
all right so suppose there is a um, a vaccination has been deferred or it was not given so you do a catch up vaccination catch up if the child is starting between 3 to 6 months give three dose plus one booster okay timing between two vaccination should be four weeks and the last vaccine and the booster should be eight weeks minimum okay so preferably keep the booster at 16 to 18 months right so even if you start late you will still end up having at least two months gap between the last and the booster vaccine 6 to 12 months age group two doses plus booster 12 to 15 months one dose plus one booster more than 15 months just one dose no need for a booster more than 5 years actually you need not need a vaccination only in high risk age groups high risk as in uh, any asplenia hypospenia conditions you need to give 2 weeks before splenectomy okay if you are doing a planned splenectomy and immunodeficiency people will require single dose no booster and what are the adverse drug reactions adverse drug reactions similar to every other vaccine you will write local systemic systemic is fever what about local local you will have some pain redness swelling it is present in 25% but decreases by 24 hours that's all about your hemoplasin influenza b thank you guys